Hello and welcome to our recent trip aboard the Viking Sea. Part 5 is all about the Viking Sea itself, the dining options aboard the Viking Sea, and I'll close out this video with some impressions, commentary, and pros and cons on sailing with Viking. Embarkation was a breeze, since Viking spaced out the arrival of the buses and had a reasonable staged check-in. In Barcelona, we were efficiently checked in, and then it was up an escalator and back down a enclosed bridge to the Viking Sea. The Viking Sea is considered a small to mid-sized ship with only 930 passengers served by 550 crew. The Viking Sea is considered to have 14 decks, nine of which are passenger decks. The terminal's bridge fed us directly into deck one. Navigating the Viking Sea is fairly easy. Decks clearly marked with electronic signage and directions to the various venues. The forward elevator banks feature a different mural at each floor to help you navigate the ship. The main space on deck one amidships is the living room. The living room has all of the guest services areas as well as a three-story atrium. The living room is also home to the bar. The bar is not only a great place for a drink in the evening, you can also pick up a fresh pastry and a cappuccino in the morning. Specialty coffees and the pastries are included and there is never an additional charge. The official library is also part of the living room. Although in my opinion, the entire ship is a library with books scattered about every public area. Also found all around the ship are wonderful pieces of art, with much of it being Viking art. The living room is also home to many of the ship's activities, including Bago. The Viking version has the crew playing against the guest and gradually ascending the stairway. The living room is a convenient place to gather before dinner, and there is always some low-key musical entertainment featuring the resident pianist, the classical duo, or a solo guitarist. Deck One is home to the two specialty restaurants on Viking Sea, the very interesting chef's table that changes menus three or four times during your voyage. Every dinner at the chef's table features a wine pairing with each of the dishes. Menu tonight was called Lotus. It started with an Indian style potato dumpling before moving on to a soft shell crab, followed by what they called the Red Lotus, granite with a guava and cranberry flavoring. After our palate cleanser, we retreated to our entree that evening Thai lamb chops. Finishing off the meal was a well executed yuzu cheesecake. Next door is Viking's Italian restaurant at Sea Manfredi's. Because of scheduling conflicts and the inability to book a table at a decent time, we did not actually eat at Manfredi's this go-round. So the pictures here are from our last visit on the Viking Sea in 2019. at the opposite end of the ship, in the bow area, is the Live Nordic Spa and Exercise Center. In addition to the salon and beauty options, the Live Nordic Spa offers full separate men's and women's locker rooms, offer a finished sauna and cold plunge, and a small lounge and waiting area where you can queue up for your massages. 
And yes, there are additional charges for massages and salon services, as well as the different type of therapies offered. The locker rooms are also gateways to the incredible and included thermal suite. More people were taking advantage of the thermal suite this time around, but we found it was still somewhat underutilized. What's that I spy with my little eye? Could that be snow? The thermal suite is also home to two distinctly different temperature extremes. If you go right, you step into the steam room where you can parbroil yourself to well done and then step out, walk across the hall, and cover yourself with snow. Kind of a Viking thing. Once you finish with that, you can step out and lie on the heated benches in the middle and then seek out another torture device, the cold plunge bucket that allows you to dump very cold water over your head if you so desire. This area is also home to a well-equipped exercise center complete with an array of weights and cardio machines. A Pilates room and a yoga slash meditation room. Moving on to deck two and starting in the bow of the ship, we have the Star Theater. The Star Theater has a bar right outside the entrance and is the main venue for all of the production shows and the many enrichment speakers. All we have is here and now. No life. Torres Haven is the one and only nightclub aboard the Viking Sea and what passes for late night entertainment. Featured here is usually the Viking band with the two vocalists that you saw in the theater or the resident guitarist. Continuing down the hall are the obligatory shops at sea. Nestled among the bangles and baubles that you find on every cruise line, are children's books that have been co-authored by Viking CEO Tors Hagen's daughter, Karen Hagen. A small convenience store caps off the shops where you can pick up essentials like toothpaste, Pringles, or chocolate. Deck 2 houses more interesting Viking artifacts as well as the future cruise director. Two is also home to the restaurant, which is the main dining venue aboard the Viking Sea. The restaurant is open seating, and each evening would feature a destination menu that offered local specialties, as well as a menu that had popular and always available items. We visited the restaurant several times over the voyage, and each time we found the food well presented and prepared. The serving staff at the restaurant was always warm and hospitable with prompt and timely service served up with a smile. Some of the standouts included things like tuna tartare, a sort of simple shrimp cocktail, varied appetizers and salads and soups, as well as several surf and turf sort of options including this beautifully prepared hunk of pork belly with a bit of seared foie gras on top. Desserts were always good, with reliable standouts like creme brulee and cheesecake. The teak floored Viking promenade deck is also located on deck two. Walking around this deck four times gives you one mile against your daily step requirements. Deck three is all cabins and a bit of the atrium, while decks four, five, and six are all staterooms. Deck seven continues with the public areas and hosts some of the larger suites, including the owner's suite. Starting at the aft end, we see the Aquavit Terrace, which is the home to the small infinity pool and the al fresco dining options. Stepping inside, we find the Aquavit Bar, 
set dead center in the back of the World Cafe. The World Cafe is Viking's breakfast, lunch, and dinner option, served buffet style. The selections for all three meal times were extensive and featured some of the same items featured in the restaurant. However, because of the buffet serving style, we found the offerings in the restaurant to be fresher and generally more appealing. In the World Cafe, there is also a sushi bar and a lackluster, sort of cardboardy tasting pizza from a standalone serving station. Once again, the serving staff at the World Cafe were a delight and fun to interface with. Midships on deck seven is the pool area. The pool area on Viking ships feature a retractable roof that allows the freshwater pool to stay open no matter what the weather outside. There are plenty of loungers surrounding the pool, as well as seating and dining options for the pool bar and the pool grill. The pool grill is basically a lunchtime only venue, serving up a variety of hamburgers and hot dog type of fare, including the standout Viking burger and the somewhat healthier option of a salad bar. Deck 7 is home to the Winter Garden. The Winter Garden hosts afternoon tea. The doors on the Winter Garden can open wide to the pool tables and loungers to each side. Along with afternoon tea, musical entertainment is presented by the resident pianist, guitarist, or the classical duo. But in my opinion, way better than the afternoon tea is hunkering down with a piece of success cake at Momsen's Deli. Momsen's is named in honor of Viking owner Tors Hagen's mother, known as Momsen, and features some of her recipes such as success cake and apple cake. Momsen's also serves up some breakfast fare that include waffles and pastries. The Explorer's Lounge is a two-level affair that is spacious and comfortable throughout. There is a bar that serves up drinks in the evening, coffee and juice in the morning, and tea throughout the day. The Explorer's Lounge is home to entertainment in the evenings from the resident pianist or guitarist. There are plenty of books to enjoy as well as very interesting artwork and Viking artifacts scattered throughout. This was our favorite little alcove where we could sit and enjoy some tea and some success cake in the afternoons. Deck 8, sometimes called the Sun Deck, has a pathway that circles the retractable roof over the pool. It is also home to several suites and turns out to be a great observation deck. Deck 8 is also home to the very interesting upper level of the Explorer's Lounge. As you look around, you find many models of ships and even a dirigible. Continue looking about and you'll find lots of nautical knickknacks. There are even some old nautical charts and books that you can take to the chart table in the back of the room and peruse at your leisure. Stepping out on the deck, you can walk around and look down upon the pool or look up and see the radar tower and the sports deck. There are a few tables and loungers spread about deck eight, but we seldom found anybody utilizing the space. As mentioned, it really is a neat place to kind of look things over from an elevated position, as in here where we get a nice night view of Naples. The last public deck, Deck 9, I don't really consider a deck at all. It is a space that contains mini putt, some exercise equipment, a yoga space, and shuffleboard or a bit of bowling. My wife insisted that we put this part in where she literally spanked me 
on the bowling. This was an achievement she was apparently very proud of. Good job, dear. Deck nine is also home to the coins that are traditionally put inside the keel or elsewhere on a ship for good luck. The dates on these coins represent four generations of Hawkins. Let's talk accommodations. We stayed in suite 5024, which was considered a deluxe veranda suite. While not overly spacious, it was a very accommodating suite and was big enough. Closet space was big enough. The TV was generously sized and there was plenty of table space and plugs available for all your charging needs. The TV is handy and supplies instant access to your reservations and even your bill if you've been charging anything extra. The bathroom is well laid out and is big enough. The veranda is generously sized, has a table and two chairs. So, was everything perfect? Well, of course not. Overall, things went very well, with the voyage well organized and were well planned. There were, of course, a few small glitches, like the television. With the very poor internet aboard, you need your interface through the television to tell you what's going on. Unfortunately, for two and a half days, our television looked like this on two separate occasions. Now, the first day was my fault since I didn't tell anyone about it, thinking it would reset on its own. When I did get around to telling our cabin steward, he immediately contacted IT, and they did reset it. Unfortunately, it lasted for about eight hours, and then it went on the blink once more. This time, I immediately contacted our cabin steward, and he got IT involved, and it was reset again within four or five hours. Now, the other thing that bugged me just a little bit was the somewhat shabby appearance of the furniture in our room. Now, don't get me wrong. Our cabin steward kept everything spick and span and in top condition as far as cleanliness, but the tattered condition of some of the furniture gave me the feeling that some things had been sort of pushed off and put aside. So now it's time to get down to the nitty gritty. The pros and cons, my opinions, and they are only my opinions, of how this trip went. Let's start with the upfront stuff. I booked my trip directly through Viking, and ease of booking was five star all the way through found the travel booking a little bit off. Viking pretty much ignored my preferences that I had established long before, and I found out that they automatically reset the darn things every time you book a cruise. Now, I think something like that should be told to you up front, but it wasn't. Luckily, I had paid a bit more for what they call the Viking Advantage. Using that, I was able to go back and rebook the flights through Viking Travel to something a little bit more accommodating. It did cost me a little bit more extra, but the travel was much more pleasant. We also booked two extra days in Barcelona and found the hotel of choice, the Barcelona Nobu, to be a good one. There were two provided tours and only one optional tour that we declined. The second provided tour turned out to be sort of a delaying tactic used by Viking to stage the embarkation at the terminal. This worked out well and embarkation was smooth and easy peasy. Once we were on board and had a chance to explore a bit, we found the Viking Sea was, well, the same as our 2019 trip. Overall cleanliness attention to detail, and maintenance of the ship appeared to be outstanding in all the public areas. Now, just as before, we both loved the Scandinavian design and aesthetic of the Viking Sea and found it beautifully accommodating and comfortable. As far as crew, we found them always friendly and accommodating. Even the captain was very friendly and accessible, sometimes even solo greeting passengers as they returned to the ship. Service staff was also friendly, 
and did an outstanding job with only minor exceptions. Our sweet stewards took care of us very well, keeping the suite clean and restocking the refrigerator with essential supplies such as chocolate. Viking has at least one included excursion in every port, most of which turn out to be walking tours or their so-called panoramic tours. A panoramic tour is essentially code for get on a bus and drive around town. I would avoid the panoramic tours and instead consider purchasing an excursion, which usually encompass a whole lot more, are much better structured and a more in-depth look at the port or area in which you are staying. Just a quick footnote on COVID preparedness planning and protection for Viking passengers. I consider the Viking protocols to be robust and realistic at the same time. At no time while I was on board the ship did I feel uncomfortable, crowded, or concerned about COVID. Certainly well done in this respect. So let's talk entertainment for just a minute. Viking has a sampling of the normal shipboard activities on a cruise, such as trivia, name that tune, and so on. But the real focus is on enrichment. So in line with that, they schedule lectures, sometimes multiple lectures in a single day, on ports and other interesting topics. There is musical entertainment and production shows that consist of a small three or four piece band, a pop duet, the Viking singers, and the cruise director and assistant cruise director. There is a resident pianist that plays the various venues around the ship, guitarist and vocalist doing the same, and a classical duet, violin, and cello. There were effectively five different venues aboard the ship for entertainment. The Star Theater is the main stage where all the production shows, guest performers, and guest lecturers lived. There was also the much more intimate Explorer's Lounge, the only late-night venue on the ship, Tours Haven Nightclub, the living room, where the pianist, guitarist, or the classical duo performed, and lastly, the Winter Garden. The Winter Garden was home to the afternoon tea, and along with afternoon tea, they would have the pianist or the guitarist or the classical duo performing there as well. I list it as a venue, but the sound quality inside the Winter Garden was horrible. It is all glass walls and highly reflective, resulting in a pretty crappy sound overall. So I have previously mentioned all the different restaurants on the ship, but let's talk ease of getting reservations at the two specialty restaurants. Although I should have been able to book at least one each of the two specialty restaurants during our trip online, the online failed to give me a reservation and instead said, hey, you've got to do this on the ship. The result was while I could get a decent reservation time at the chef's table, Van Freddy's would only give me an 8.30 reservation time. When I went back and asked Again, if I could have an earlier reservation time, I was given a 6 o'clock reservation on October 10th. Unfortunately, we were leaving the ship, never to return, the morning of the 10th. When I told them about their mistake and asked them to remove the reservation, it remained on my app and TV for the rest of the trip. I've already spoken at length about the restaurant and the World Cafe, so we'll skip those in this summary. After trying it one more time, we tended to give the afternoon tea deal in the Winter Garden a miss as well. We found it much more to our liking to avoid the crowds that gathered for the afternoon tea and spend that time at Momsen's enjoying a bit of success cake or apple turte. One more thing to mention is, of course, the IT situation on the Viking Sea. To start off with, internet is slow and needs to be brought into the 21st century. On the plus side, the internet is included in the fare so you can make your connections whenever able at no extra charge and without buying an internet package. 
I mentioned earlier the trouble that we had with the TV, and after the second try, it was corrected to the point where there were no more issues throughout the rest of the voyage. I'm also going to mention that the reservation system for the restaurants wasn't that good, whether we were trying to do it or whether the maitre d' at the restaurant was trying to do it. So I don't know where I can say the problem lies with that one other than seems like an IT issue as well. Lastly, I'll mention disembarkation. Disembarkation went fine, though oddly in Venice you had to disembark in Fusina, take a bus ride back to Venice where we would walk through a basically empty cruise terminal and head out either to the airport or continue on with your post-cruise extension. I must mention that our post-cruise extension, which is highlighted in the fourth video of this series, was outstanding. And that was the case all the way through until it was time to go home. Viking had booked us such an early flight from Florence to Rome that we had to literally get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and put our luggage out for them to pick up, take downstairs, and toss in the back of a limousine. The limousine ride was interesting, and while it was a comfortable trip with a skillful driver behind the wheel, it was in total darkness down narrow country roads and sort of a white-knuckle experience. The flight from Florence to Rome was uneventful other than me having to pay an extra $100 for a suitcase I didn't think I should have to pay for. When in Rome, we had plenty of time to find a lounge, sit around for a while, and then hop on our plane back home. So as a brief summary, I will say that we did enjoy our trip overall, and once more found the Viking Sea to be a beautiful and accommodating ship. Did the trip go perfectly? Well, of course not. Nothing does these days. And I have to say that Viking might be trying to economize in some places where it really shouldn't, such as in travel arrangements. Pre and post cruise travel arrangements are very important to most people. And for some, if that doesn't go well, then none of it will go well. Are there some post COVID cracks showing? Yes, I think so. But I think Viking has the skill and determination to get past those little problems and get back to the well-oiled machine that it was pre-pandemic. Please stay tuned for our next trip, where we board the beautiful Silver Seas Silver Moon in June of 2023. On the Silver Moon, we will make our way from London, England, around to Wales, Ireland, Scotland, and then across the sea for four days in Iceland. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Please check out the rest of the videos on our channel and keep an eye out for those new ones as they appear. I will also be going back through old footage and into the archives to see if I can do a few more short shots videos. I'm also thinking of a special video focusing on the food of China and or Japan so let me know if you have any interest in something like that. Cheers and happy travels.